like Sapnil said, AI is the hot topic today and uh, we have developed something new in this field. So it all changed in September of 2022 with release of ChatGPT, the generative pre-trained transformer. It's a very catchy name in short form only. So when we studied that in around Jan and Feb of uh, last year, we found that it is based on neural network. So the entire concept of chat GPT and the learning model is based on neural network. So who else better than doctors who can understand this thing? So that's where we started uh, focusing a year and a half ago on this particular entity. And we started looking for various different names. So this is my son who suggested me the name of ortho AI. And we started working with this particular name. This is the team that helped us develop it, uh, Parag sir and Neeraj. And we thought that this is what we want to do. We want to help orthopedic surgeons in their decision making. And we studied the current matrix and this is what we aimed at. It should help us reduce cost, improve quality of life, improve outcomes of our patients and help us in increase the safety of our procedures. So it should reduce complications also. With these three aims, we went ahead with studying the current evidence model. So this is the current evidence model. We have clinical circumstances, research evidence, patient preferences combined together with clinical expertise. Now, it is very difficult to get answers through this model. I mean, if you go to Google or PubMed or to any other site and try to synthesize an evidence-based answer, it is really difficult to do that unless you read in depth, understand all research methodology terms, understand statistics. And there are also many more challenges. How to keep updated with literature, which is getting like 5,000 articles per day on PubMed and combining clinical expertise with, uh, with the current literature. So, Say for orthoplasty literature, we have so many articles coming. So how would Dr. Kiran combine this orthoplasty literature with his clinical expertise? It's, it becomes very difficult and it needs to be personalized. So that is where the AI came into picture and that is what is to be solved using AI. These are basically large language models. So they have learned to speak, they have learned to analyze, uh, right now, there is a lot happening in this space. We are still in very uh, nascent stage in AI. So this is what we developed after a uh, year and a half. It was launched on 11th December 2023. And this is the architecture. So it is very intuitive and responsive. It is It has data integrated. It has a versatile language model and it is dynamic in nature. Now, this is technical part you don't have to go through, but what I mean is it has a customized database created by orthopedic surgeon. So we have a group of 35 orthopedic surgeons who have created this database. It combines articles of this database with PubMed. So it has true evidence base and it has access to all 10,000 videos from Ortho TV. So everybody who has taken talk on Ortho TV Ortho AI has learned from all those videos and it has data, information and knowledge from all those videos and it combines them together. So it is experience based also. So that is why it is unique. While on the other hand, ChatGPT only has access to its own database and PubMed. It does not have access to Ortho TV videos or it summarizes a summary of those. So it is the first, world's first AI that we have developed and it is developed in India. So we are really proud of that. Thanks. So it is a very simple model. This is how the website looks and it is currently web-based. It does not have a mobile app, but it can you can use it on a mobile very simply by signing in through Google. So you just click on sign in with Google wherever you are on the browser and it just starts and you can start talking to it. It also saves all your chats okay and this is how it starts answering to you it gives references to current literature and it also gives links to ortho tv videos on the related topic so that is the two additional part of that 
So we have a vision ortho AI as a co-pilot to all orthopedic surgeons in future. So co-pilot means it will work together with you on various things. For example, it will work with you as a surgical co-pilot. Now, currently it just chats to you. So how do you use it as a surgical co-pilot? For example, here I'm asking it about complication of spondylolisthesis surgery. So it, it gives me a very generalized overview of the, of the complications that are currently there. However, once I go into detail of one single complications, for example, I want to go into complication of dural tear. So how do I treat dural tear during surgery? So even when you're operating and you got stuck and something is not working, um, you can actually ask ortho here directly that this is what I'm doing, this is what has happened. You have to explain it in text in as much detail as possible and it will give you the entire thing. So here it has given me the entire logic of how to treat dural tear intraoperatively. Now I go ahead and ask it, give me steps of dural repair. So it, it will give me exact steps. So how to expose, what kind of uh, graph to use. Then I go ahead and ask what kind of suture material I can use for dural tears. So it gives me exactly what suture material should I use. If I don't have certain suture material, I can ask it for alternative and it will suggest me the alternative. So I get, go one step ahead. I said I tried to suture it, but once I finished suturing it tore again and started leaking. I mean, this is, sorry. So this is the graph tore again and started leaking. So it is a very peculiar condition where you can still ask and it goes on to give me answer. Reattempt to suture, use fibrin glue, use muscle or fat graft, use dural substitute, use a drain. So this is how it goes on. If I again say that, sorry. If I again say that I am unable to uh, re-suture it and it is still leaking and it's open, what do I do next? So the further answer it gives me that close the wound, close the surgical exposure, put in a drain and it gave me how to use caffeine in this particular scenario. It exactly gives me what doses to use according to patient weight. So it, it goes on answering in depth. So the first answer you will get is very general, but as you go on answering, asking in great details, it will go on answering in details. So it, it has a knowledge, huge knowledge base and it has a huge experience base. So as and when you go on using it, it answers more. So it is also a clinical co-pilot. For example, here I have a clinical scenario. I have a 56 year old female with diabetes, hypertension, grade two L4 or L5 lysis posted for Zilif, please give me DVT prophylaxis for this particular patient. So it gives me, how do I assess the risk? Mechanical prophylaxis, pharmacological prophylaxis, exact doses according to body weight. So it will give everything that you need to do that. Okay. But I still have questions that <clears throat> patient is already undergoing this surgery. Will above methods be safe? Will it not increase the risk of bleeding or infection? So it answers me in a proper evidence-based format. What is the risk of infection? What is the risk of bleeding? And it gives me references and videos to that end. So that is how your queries would be easily answered by using this. I again go ahead and ask it, sorry. I go ahead and ask it that, Patient, even after prophylaxis, developed DVT after three days. What should I do next? And it gives me, again, a proper evidence-based answer on what should I do next. So it is more on how you keep on using it. You don't have to Google anything now any longer. Use Ortho AI for all your orthopedic queries, and it will give you the best answer from all sources. Clinical scenarios, pelvic fracture, 35-year-old male, with motorbike accident has an open book pelvic fracture with pubic diastasis and combinated proximal femur. So how do I plan? How do I approach this case? And it, it gives me a very rational overview of how to go about, including the management of uh, primary survey, resuscitation, 
ATLS pathways, secondary survey. So it gives a proper protocol. You can even develop protocols for your own hospitals for certain scenarios using Ortho AI. It has all the guidelines that are available for AOS, NHS, or other resources. So you be sure that it is used by using all those guidelines. Here I've written, can you detail, give me details of uh, surgical step of pubic diastasis. So it has surgical, huge surgical database and steps of all surgery. So it gives you approach, patient positioning, dissection. So everything is provided in the text. How should you place your CRM and what are the preparations you need to do? Then I ask, what are the common complications of uh, how do I avoid complication in this particular surgery? And it gives me what are the complication and what precautions should I take to avoid it? Next is very interesting. I, I ask what additional instruments and implants do I need on the trolley for this particular case? And it gives me a list of instruments and implants that I need. So it, is, it can also be used by your OT staff to update themselves if they need any additional instrument and implants for the case. Drug interaction. So Ortho AI has inbuilt drug interaction where, I mean, knowledge base, where it can, you can give it a clinical scenario. For example, I have a patient of knee OA, I am prescribing diclofenac, but the patient is already using lisinopril. Are there any drug interaction? So it explained me what are the drug interactions with lisinopril and diclofenac. And it also gives me how to manage it. I mean, how to safely give also gives me alternative methods. Should I modify the dose of diclofenac? So it gives me answers on how to use diclofenac in this particular patient if I really want to use. So it gives me a standard dose and asks me to start lower dose, do kidney functions. I mean, these are all videos just going on. I'll probably share the PPT with you. You can see it in detail. But it is, if you ask the same question to Ortho AI even right now, it will give you all the answers. So you don't have to read the video on the screen. It is a great research assistant. So my main aim for personally was to help in research. So AI got, Ortho AI has, is a great academic co-pilot. It can help you write narrative reviews. For example, here I've asked you to write a, a narrative review on, I think, proximal uh, syndesmotic injuries. And it, it is giving me a narrative review based on last two years articles on syndesmotic injury. It also gives me uh, references. So can you write me a narrative review in a journal format? So I'm just asking you to write in a journal format and it gives me like a journal format. So it will write uh, first write introduction, then various articles and it will concise like a narrative review. Okay. In the end, I ask it, can you write a narrative review with references in Vancouver format? So it will add the references at the end of each sentences number wise and give that reference lead at the end of narrative review. So you can easily write narrative reviews for, so this is like adding the Vancouver format. Next is you can write or revise your research papers using Ortho AI very easily. So this is one of my articles which I submitted to JBGS and they asked for revision. So it was bilateral genovalgum due to, uh, oh wait, yeah. So this was a case report. I am unable to justify use of eight plates. Reviewers have pointed this. How should I approach this particular, answering this particular query? And it goes ahead and gives me a detailed answer to the particular query, including, sorry, including references. So it is mentioning Peter what Peter Stevens 2007 publication while answering and it is giving me quote. Okay, so it is helping me how to rewrite my answer to the reviewers question. Okay, it is also giving me a revised paragraph in incorporating all the changes. So it gave me a proper thing. Now, I cannot submit it directly. I'll read it, check all the things that it has given me. But that is how it works. It can help you write thesis very easily. Making your presentations, I think time is short, I'll just 
make through you can easily make your presentations on ortho ai so i want to have a talk on oom and robotics in spine and it will make a 30 slide ppt on what each slide should contain then i can go in details of each slide and ask it to give me good content including references for each slide so it will do that for you too okay finding references like i said for students you can write short note it can solve your theory paper easily so it can give you ready made answers for all your theory papers it is not optimized for clinical i mean case presentation but it still gives you if you ask it that i have this case of say 6 year old boy or torticollis present me as i present in ms ortho exam it will attempt to do that and it does a fairly good job out of it so patient education you can create patient medication pamphlets out of it you can create in different languages for example this one is in marathi ortho ai works in these Hin indian languages as well as these foreign languages so you can create patient education pamphlets using all these languages so it is a focused decision making research innovation all these things can be done using ortho ai it does not have live access to internet so it will not give you very recent references currently it does not read radiological images but i think in 2 years it will it cannot do perfect predictive analysis but it does um a limited one there are certain hallucinations sometimes it gives wrong results so you have to be careful about that it's an evolving ecosystem we are exploring and researching we have updates almost like every week that are coming out for the ai but still i think these are just baby steps we are going to fall but we are sure to get up sometimes you'll find this error messages on ortho ai but don't worry there are people who are working behind the scenes and it will get resolves very soon so this is what the future we are looking at ai has done a huge job in increasing the information and knowledge part but ai will never replace doctors that is what i for working with ai stand here and say but doctors using ai will replace doctors not using it that is the truth that will happen in next 4 5 years so that is the reason why we are developing ai as a co pilot maybe in next 2 years all of you will have your individual co pilot so dr samir will have his own ortho ai dr samir co pilot who will adjust to him who will talk to him in his own language you can feed a ortho ai conference recordings like pozac and it will remember in future and it will keep on answering whatever you learn you feed it to it it will remember so all of you will have customized your own ortho ais in next 2 years that is what will happen is going to happen it will be a physical and a digital a physical universe that we are going to look at in next 2 years surely thank you this is the team thank you very much <laughs>